Okay, so me and Heather and Bella are off for another camping trip. This time we're in a different spot. Tons of crown land. And one of the things that's especially amazing is there's lots of little lakes on the side with absolutely no cottages, short portages. No one's ever camped in there. And you can go in and have the lake all to yourself. And uh, that's what we're planning on doing. Thunderstorm warnings for today. It's been hammering rain, but as soon as we got here, it just stopped. So, so we're doing good. So um, anyway, without further ado, we got some miles to put behind us. We're off. In the boat. In the boat. Good girl. Bella, in the boat. In the boat. It's going here? Yeah, in the boat. Get down. Bella, in the boat. In the boat. Come on, in the boat. Good girl. In the boat. Come on, Bella. In the boat. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl, stay. Okay. Bella wants to stay and play, okay. apparently. So we've got about five kilometers to paddle and a portage. The rain pissed off for us. It was just hammering rain all the way in the car and you know, the weather said uh, had a, a weather warning of thunder and lightning and heavy downpours and possible hail. And so right now we're not doing so bad. One of the cool landmarks on this lake is this awesome lighthouse behind me. Been there for a long time since uh, the logging days and it still stands and it's kind of unique for a lake of this size to have that and uh, I think it's awesome and everybody does too. Do you like the lighthouse Heather? I love the lighthouse. <laughs> Such a beautiful smell coming off uh, the trees because uh, of the heavy rain and now the sun is out. It's all just evaporating and it brings with it all the smells of the forest and all the pine trees. And it's so nice that uh, damp, warm smell with the pines. The air just smells so much fresher up here, you know, in the cities it's just so stale and there's nothing to it. Bella's excited to be here. Imagine I did that. Like, I jumped out of the boat. I was so excited. And I just started ripping around, tearing up sticks and digging up holes. And Tasmanian devil, I tell you. That would actually be hilarious. I wouldn't mind seeing that. <laughs> just uh, ripping up sticks. Rolling in dead holes. animals, just ripping sticks up. <laughs>
puke falling on me. Gross. Well, it puked in the canoe earlier. When I turned it over, it all just dumped all over me. So I'm just covered in dog puke now. But, uh, awesome little spot here. I think we'll have the campsite to ourselves and the lake to ourselves. And it's literally a 50 meter portage. So Bella, I don't know if she got a little seasick, but she puked in the canoe paddling over here. And uh, when I turned the canoe upside down to portage, all the dog puke dumped all over me. Pretty gross. The joys of dog ownership. There's how they're bringing up the rear. We're here at the campsite. It's beautiful. The storm broke. We just got this beautiful sun shining right now. And I'm happy about that. <laughs> Shortest portage of all time, I think. Uh, it's got to be 50 meters. Can't be anymore. And um, we just have the whole lake to ourselves. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, knowing these kind of spots that are, uh, as I said, called crown land here in the state's public land, that isn't a park. It People don't know they can book a site. They don't know how the lake is. So if you take the time to explore it, usually when you get in there, no one's there. And uh, that's the beauty of this. Ted and I get our own private lake for the night. Yay. Yay.
Heather's getting her little nest set up. Uh, she likes to uh, get it set up right away when we get to camp. It makes her feel more comfortable. And I gotta admit, it is kind of nice to know everything's set up. Yeah. Me, I me, I leave everything the last minute and go fishing, but uh, you know, it is nice to have your home set up. Nice and cozy. So my clothes bag is slightly larger. Than Ted's clothes bag. Just here. Yep. <laughs> you never know how the weather's gonna be. You gotta bring a little bit of everything. <laughs> it's all full of string bikinis. <laughs> yep. It's nice that Heather likes to get the uh, tent all set up uh, because I hate just crawling around. I'm like. I'm not that tall, but I'm kind of tall and it just hurts my back and I hate crawling around in tight spaces when I could be outside and I'm sure she doesn't love it, but uh, I think uh, likes having, you know, a nice warm, dry place that you can run if the weather takes a turn for the worse. And I got to admit, it's pretty nice to know that. Me, I just like being outside and pushing the envelope and fishing or doing whatever I can. Uh, and I procrastinate on the tent because it's not my favorite thing. So. It's nice to have her um, who enjoys doing that so that uh, I don't have to do it. So Bella has uh, been digging ravenously and I was thinking maybe there was a mouse or a chipmunk or something like that, but I realized it's the site of a, um, I realized it's the site of a old turtle egg spot. It's kind of sandy and so a turtle's come up and laid its eggs there. Luckily they're not fresh eggs that she just killed, uh, but she could smell them and often you see wolves or foxes have done that. And sure enough, Bella's done it. So she's dug up this uh, sandy area, which I'll I'll put back so they can lay their eggs there again. Uh, but you can see all the turtle egg shells. So you can see all the turtle egg shells and uh, so they've already hatched but she's dug them up and she's actually eating them and it's pretty funny. So that's what she's digging all these holes for. She's got a good sniffer this one. Turtle egg shell. Uh, Bella's been eating them which I'm not sure why, they don't seem too appetizing. They're just really soft and flaky, but she's been digging up holes all over the campground just uh, eating tons of turtle egg shells. She's pretty proud with her farm. Bella, what's this? See, she loves them. <laughs> You're so silly.
Uh, I see some really ominous clouds coming in and there's a severe thunderstorm warning starting in about half an hour. Uh, and I thought that had passed, but it doesn't look like it has. So I'm gonna rig up a tarp uh, just so, you know, we're kind of prepared. Worst comes to worst, I, you know, the storm happens, but worst comes to worst, second to that, I rig up the tarp for no reason, but I'm going to do it just because uh, it's nice to have it done before the rain hits and so we can cook under it and stuff. But um, yeah, not excited about that. Just looking forward to a nice sunset. And now it just looks like there's some crappy clouds. We're hearing thunder. It sounds pretty scary. It's gone really dark all of a sudden. We thought the storm had passed, but there's a new severe warning, weather warning, and it looks like it's headed our way. So hopefully it's short-lived, but it does seem like we have a very good chance of getting hit. Uh, we still have to cook dinner and everything. We don't want to do that in the hammering rain, so I better get this tarp set up fast. You know, we might be all right. Even if we get hit, it'll pass quick. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna peg the back grommets to the ground and then using paracorded pegs in the front, I'm going to set up um, just a couple of sticks and some cordage. So this is a great way to set up a tarp quickly. And if you don't have, um, you know, trees perfectly for you set up, um, you just cut a couple dead sticks that are tall enough and you use them as your tree. And you basically tie the cordage to one and then down to the ground and peg it. And uh, you can get it pretty solid that way. I didn't do any fancy knot. I just wrapped it around twice. Well, there you have it. I mean, there's more solid ways you can rig up a tarp, uh, but that was pretty quick. And I wanted the tarp right in front of our fire. Uh, you know, I didn't want to just work with where trees were. Look at my little lumberjack girl. <laughs> Isn't she cute? She's pretty cute. The severe weather warning ends at 11. Maybe it'll miss us, hopefully it does. Um, after I set up the tarp, I was kind of hoping it was gonna hit us, is that weird? <laughs> but uh, now I'm delayed and I gotta get firewood and it's getting dark, we gotta make dinner, so. Bella? Bella, what are you doing? Those are the hot dogs. 
Bella, what are you doing? Do you have the hot dogs? Bella, come here. Come here. Bring him here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me see. Let me see. No, those aren't for Bella. No. No. No, those aren't for Bella. Bella's really hungry and she's pestering Heather because uh, she hasn't eaten. And so she stole our hot dogs and ran off with them. So we better feed her. Want your dinner? Dinner? Bella knows a trick. You want to see one of her tricks? Watch this. Spring! 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 Yeah, Bella, sit. Sit. Tadpole. Good girl. Uh, tadpole is where she puts her legs back out like that and her tail's wag. Right. She looks like an immature tadpole or immature frog. Alright, spring! Crunch, crunch, crunch. How's it going there, sugar plums? Good. Getting out dinner. No fish. No fish. We haven't fished yet. We haven't fished. I was going to go out this evening, but this whole thunderstorm watch got me all spooked like a pansy. And it is raining, uh, but we don't really need the tarp. Like, obviously, I'm standing out here without a raincoat, so... Um, but it is kind of comforting to have it, so eases the anxiety. Uh, still not far going though. We are using creamy garlic. Nice. It's a nice change. We used the rosé last time and the what, Alfredo. So add some flavor with the garlic. It's just powdered sauce. Just add a bit of butter with it and it's, it's all right. I wouldn't say it's like amazing, but for camping, it's pretty good. You just leave a little bit of water in the bottom of the pot and just pour it in and just mix it around a little scoop of butter let it sit for a bit to thicken up and it's perfect the instructions on the sauce for the pasta want you to like simmer it down in a separate saucepan blah 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 really stressful and complicated um <laughs> not really but especially when you're out here and we don't do that. We just leave a little bit of extra water, as Heather said, and you just just the right amount, and then you just mix it in and stir it and let it sit for a little bit, and it's perfect. I honestly don't even notice the difference. So just a little tip uh, to save yourself a lot of headache when you're out here than trying to mess around, just simmering it in a separate pot for an hour or a pan. This is what they are. And uh, we generally use two packs per pot.
carry you at all. Camp poutine. It's one of my favorite things to eat while camping. Just so delicious, cheesy, lots of gravy. Mmm. Yummy. May not look all that appetizing, but believe me, it is. just a gorgeous gorgeous night and uh i kind of don't want it to be over i don't want to go to bed yet but uh, i want to get to sleep so we can get up and have a fun day tomorrow and not waste it but just have this whole lake to ourselves um it's just incredible and it's a bit of wind picked up but it's it's so quiet listen hey Pretty cool. Look at this fire reflecting off me. That's amazing. Ooh. Good night. Bella? Bella? Oh. Bella? Bella, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh. Oh. Is it time for your breakfast? Is it, is it time for your breakfast? <laughs> oh, good girl, Bella. Cheers. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning.
bacon. Yum. Look how skinny this piece is. It's nice that when there's a grill just at camp. Ooh, that is hot. I'm gonna wait a minute. That one's probably all right. So pretty hot. Mm. It's pretty good, eh? Mm-hmm. There's less in that pack, though, than the Ready Crisp one. Oh, this was the knockoff one. Yeah. It's actually... Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm hmm All right, so we're off. We are leaving this beautiful lake, which to be honest with you is kind of a toss up because we got this whole spot to ourselves and we didn't really get a chance to fish it. And it was nice. And so it's like, why move on? But we're out for the adventure. So we're going into another lake where we should have the lake to ourselves again. It's a bit of a, treacherous portage but it's short but there's no trail but we got about four kilometers to paddle we were thinking we'd just stay and swim but the weather took a turn for the worst it's starting to rain a bit and uh it's really windy so we figured it's a good time to be on the move um as far as it's not swimming weather and just sitting under a tarp is boring Okay, Bella. First portage of the day done. Yay! The rain stopped, but it's windy, so we're gonna paddle along the north side of the bay to get to where we're going. Hopefully, cut away some of this wind. Um, next portage will be interesting, but uh, it's not that long, and it's kind of cool. So let's get going. So we're just uh, approaching where the portage is. This little creek here leads up to the lake we're going into. Uh, but it's, yeah, there's no trail, so it's gonna be interesting. Heather's just getting her bug jacket on for this very possibly horribly buggy portage. It's gonna be a fun one. It's spider web face protection as well, not just mosquitoes, but I don't like a spider web in the face, so. Putting my net on. What a baby. No trail, just thick and horrible. We're gonna go through that. Um, but whatever. 
we'll get her done. Heather wanted to have a floaty weekend where we just floated on noodles. And Typical Ted. I've swindled her. This is the route we're taking. Typical Ted. Here, give me your hand. Good job. You're doing good. We'll take a break at the top. So portaging without a trail is quite treacherous. On the side of a cliff. Heather's uh, pissed at me. Um, it's a cool little uh, canyon type thing here with the uh, creek. It's pretty cool. But uh, I'd say we're a third of the way. It's just mostly directly uphill to start with, so part of what keeps people out. Not a great portage trail, not one at all, actually. But uh, we're doing it. <laughs> this isn't what she had envisioned. Nope. All right. I don't know why we don't have a backpack for Bella yet. Like, we're idiots. She's just partying. <laughs> so, um, very bad news. Um, this was an entire beaver pond behind me. And my whole life, every time I've been here, it's been completely full of water. But something must have happened to the beavers because it's basically bone dry and unpaddleable. So we just did that whole portage for nothing. And if you can see the distance all the way to the lake, I just, uh, I don't want to bushwhack all, the wa all that way there. It's just a little too far to bushwhack with the heavy gear we brought in the kind of way that we just bushwhacked with a canoe. Um, you know, it's obviously it's doable, but this, you know, isn't really what we wanted to do. So uh, maybe we'll just go back and camp on the other lake. But if you can see the pond is just absolute mud. And there's a little section in the middle there, but uh, you can't get a canoe through that. You'd have to uh, wade it and drag it through the mud the whole way. And I'm not really interested in doing that. So that's pretty disappointing. Oh, that's so disappointing. Such a cool camp spot and it just, I don't know, it's just too late in the day to try to, try to bushwhack all the way through there. Yeah, you can see over here, that's where the dam is and the water level used to be all the way up to the top and coming over it. And uh, that's how it was every single time. And when I, got up close to the lake i got a little concerned you can see the dam here i got a little concerned because i was like oh the water seems low but it should still be okay um but it's it's just not anyway there's plenty of camp spots on the other lake and so we'll go back and camp there it was an epic fail i'm blaming ted for this yeah it's kind There's of my... reason for a divorce right here <laughs> Obviously we could still get in, but we just don't want to spend our day bushwhacking. So that's not really what we had in mind. So anyway, uh, we're still doing all right and we're still on a beautiful lake. Good girl. Might have fallen out from the wind. So this 
little baby bird was just blown out of the tree by these strong winds into the lake and the mom and dad have been chirping at us and upset and we didn't know why they were freaking out but clearly this is why and so I managed to pick it up out of the lake and uh, I'll put it back here somewhere where they can tend to it hopefully uh, but I got to keep it away from Bella Let it go, it's fine. I think it'll be okay. It's gotten pretty gusty out. Hopefully this system blows through, but unfortunately we're paddling right into it. These waves are getting a lot bigger. Like crazy wind, huge waves. Just saw crazy lightning over to the left. Yeah, they're getting bigger. We're okay right now. It's sketchy when they you start having to hit them kind of sideways. More lightning over there. I don't know, is that coming this way? They're only gonna get bigger as we get closer. So, is somebody here? We're gonna find out. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, but someone just left them here. We just paddled across here and checked out a campsite on this lake that I knew was here, but I didn't know it would be taken. But luckily it's not, it's a beautiful site. This is my kind of campsite. The wife's happy, so that's always good. Gotta admit, it's a beautiful spot. There's a picnic bench here, chairs already here. And an absolutely stunning view of the big lake. Super sweet. And a uh, huge fire pit. Great spots for tents. Oh. What? That doesn't look fine. Praying. Oh, it's coming. You can see it coming across the lake. Just about to get hammered with rain. You can see it coming across the lake. And uh, it looks like it's coming pretty hard. Oh, there it is.
I'd like to set a tarp up so we could cook. Um, but uh, it's really, uh, really freaking windy and there's not very good tie downs. So I'm not really sure what my strategy is gonna be for that, but I'll figure something out. There we have it. Nice setup for cooking, even if there's heavy rain. A uh, good amount of space under here. And we might as well use this picnic table because it's here, so it's pretty good. Um, a lot of work though, just been thunderstorms all around, passing us, lightning, but tons of heavy rain and then no rain. And so it just, we we're kind of scrambling and for cooking we just figured yeah it's better to set it up uh, but of course now that it's done it's not raining at all so that's probably the key to make it not rain is put your tarp up put your rain gear on just saw a flash of lightning near thunder and still some ominous clouds so still a good chance it'll rain So there's quite the storm rolling in again. Uh, this time it's for real. And uh, woo, big flash of lightning. So it's good I got this tarp set up. I hope it's strong enough. I'm a little worried it might blow down because uh, we're really exposed to the big lake. So there's a lot of wind.
Whoa. 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 Good girl. I feel like the... Bella swam out into the lake in a lightning storm to try to go after a loon. What an idiot. <laughs> so uh, our dinner tonight, quite the thunder and lightning. Our dinner tonight is camp pizza and we need the fire to, to cook that. And it's not really the best in a hammering rain to make camp pizza because the way we're doing it is just some pizza sauce cheese, uh, peppers, a little onion, and in a, a little sandwich grill over the coals. And, you know, we we don't want it to be hammering rain when we do that. So hopefully it slows up a bit. I mean, we'll be able to do it even if it is. Plus, we want that wood oven, that wood flavor, you know, pizza, right? So anyway, looking forward to it. It looks like the system is maybe blowing through again i mean it just comes and goes and just hammers rain i think it might rain all night but just as long as it's not too bad we can manage it getting the fire going was a little tricky though i'll tell you because this side canadian shield barely any soil with just like scraggly oaks and big red pines and that kind of thing and uh you know the stuff i got you know was okay once you get a fire going but it was honestly it was soaked it was garbage so uh, it was a little tricky getting it going, but now that it's gone, we should be good. Well, it won't get ruined. It's just peppers at the moment.
really hope that tarp doesn't blow down. There's some even more powerful rain and wind coming in right now. Think, Heather? Pretty intense, I must say. This is a crazy storm. We've been in some crazy storms, but um, this one's a little scary. <laughs> I just hope the tarp doesn't come down. Yeah, so do I. I'm worried about this back corner. by lightning. Is this the floaty weekend you were hoping for? <laughs> I was just about to say, so like when we were coming out here, I was like bringing inner tubes and we were gonna like float around on floaties with like little flamingo drink holders and uh, I guess we're not doing that. <laughs> it's pretty intense out here. It's always an adventure. Oh no, I feel bad. Oh well, you can't do anything about the weather really. And honestly, it got kind of nice for like glimpses today, but it was pretty bad all day. So it wasn't the best floaty weather, unfortunately. Well, what are you going to do? got some pepperoni, we've got a whole bunch of peppers cut up, some onions, some pitas, pizza sauce over here. I'm gonna cut up a whole bunch of cheese and we're gonna make camp pizzas over the fire. I'm excited because I'm starving. We've been waiting out the storm for what feels like forever. We got here in the daylight, it's now pretty late. It's dark, but that's okay. We're hungry, so we're gonna make them and they're going to be delicious. You excited, Bella? You excited? Are you excited? Even though we're here quite early to cook our camp pizzas in the daylight, there was just like ripping storms, never ending. And so we kind of just, I don't know, I guess we could have done it, but we just didn't have it in us. So we're gonna do it now in the pitch black. Yeah, pitch black. Woo! How fun is this? So like, fun, so like fun. Pioneers. Oh no. You've got to be sitting. There's a thunderstorm coming. 
So as soon as we thought that we we're finally in the clear and we're starting to cook and we're having a fun time, all of a sudden there was this flash and I was like, that wasn't my headlamp, like what was that? And I look up and all of a sudden like the moon and stars are being blacked out and I look over and sure enough there's black clouds and then another lightning flash and thunder. So there's another thunderstorm rolling in and we probably don't have that much more time till it hits. Okay, do you want to open the sauce? So another thunderstorm is rolling in. Like, are you kidding me? This is the worst. I'm trying to cook. Anyway, we'll get it done, but it's pretty disappointing. The second we move our spot out and start sitting by the fire and having a good time, this happens. One at a time, I guess. Oh, saucy on the outside, can you catch up? Oh, yeah. I really hope this tar could not lose. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> how many thunderstorms is this place going to have in one day? This is fucking One ridiculous. night. Let's just eat it like this. <laughs> There's about cooking it. Alright. Sauce. It's a lot of sauce, yo. Okay. Yeah. Am I folding? Yeah, it's Oh. Ugh, don't make it taste good. It's kind of like a fajita pizza. Like a panzo. Or one and a half at least. Yes. Now grab that little clip at the end. Well, multiple thunderstorms later, yeah. and we got our camp pizzas in the so bad. pitch black. This thing is key, eh? This grill. This would be really hard to do. You could do it with uh, green sticks, like bushcrafty style, uh, but you know, whatever. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Mmm. Wow. It's like a calzone. So good. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Mine's kind of broken. Alright, no cheers. Nope. Good doing it. Cheers. Amazing. Oh, that's good. That is really, like, I'm not even lying. That is really good. And we have more. Mm. 
Mm. Yum. Mm -hmm. I'd order this from a restaurant, you know? Mm -hmm. Even as a wood smoky flavor, right? Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend this. And one of these things, these grills, can't always bring it, but it makes life a lot easier to cook something like this, let me tell you. You can get smaller ones that are just like thin, you can do one at a time, but really good. Ooh. What? There's a huge crash in the woods just now. Oh yeah? Yeah. What kind of crash? Like either a branch or an animal, like a big one. How they just shoot a, heard a huge crash in the woods. It's got me a little nervous. Whether a branch or an animal, she said. It's not very windy at the moment, so. Not windy at the moment, but we did hear a huge crash in the woods. It sounded like right behind the tent, though. I didn't hear anything. It was like a choo choo, like thud. Hmm. It was loud. Where's Bella? She's right here. Is she growling? No. To make a bat on um, what was it say a, a branch falling. Mm -hmm. um, round two. There you go. Round two on camp pizzas. You know, like this would be a little sketchy if it was hammering, hammering rain. But a little bit of rain isn't the end of the world because like you are over a fire, right? Well, good night. Um, quite the day. Winds paddling across the big lake there and uh, the pretty big waves to uh, this campsite and it being nice, but then just a freaking thunderstorm just rolled through what seemed like with every seventh wave, there was like a new micro thunderstorm. It was crazy. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, so, but it was also pretty and pretty cool to be involved in, but it really delayed our dinner, but it was delicious. Those camp pizzas, amazing doing that again for sure. I haven't done that in a while, or I just feel like it was never as good as I made it this time. Maybe it was that little sandwich grill that we had that made it so good, but anyway, they were good. Good night. I'm beat. Good night, Bella. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bella. Good night, Bella. Good girl. Good girl. Me and Heather and Bella uh, survived the wave of thunderstorms that ripped through here. Heather's making fancy pan. What are you making? Apple cinnamon. We're gonna fry up some apples with some butter, a lot of cinnamon, some maple syrup. Then we're gonna make pancakes and just drizzle it all on top. It's gonna be amazing. That sounds yummy. Mm -hmm. And there's even some wild blueberries around. Maybe I'll pick a couple of those, throw them in the pancake booze. <laughs> duck first, lips. Coffee. All right, duck lips on three. One, two, three.
Well, it's uh, just an absolutely ripping wind here at our campsite. So um, we're making pancakes this morning. Not really the best thing to cook in a ripping wind. Even though we have that tarp set up, it's just flapping and there's still a lot of wind eddying back into it. So uh, we're, there's a little secluded place at the back of the campsite that's sheltered from the wind. And so we're going to move our cooking setup back here. Tastes like fall. Delicious. Sugar on top of sugar, on top of butter on top of sugar. The cinnamon apple on this is so good. It's a nice change. Mm -hmm. Those pancakes we made this morning, the apples, roasted apples with cinnamon and cinnamon sugar and maple syrup that Heather whipped up. Oh my goodness, you gotta, you gotta try that. That is just really good. And to make it even better, we had wild blueberries in the pancakes. And you know, it doesn't get much better than that. Like what else, what else do you want in life? Like if you want more, you're, you're pushing it. You, that's not fair. It's unseasonably cold. There's a cold front, just pounding thunderstorms, ripping wind. It's not, you know, swimmy weather. So uh, we decided to stay another day, um, but we don't really have enough food to stay another day. So I'm gonna have to go out and try to catch a fish because we have some remnants. We've got like a pita, um, we've got two apples. We have, uh, we have a steak that, um, somehow we'd never cooked and it might be rotten now. So I'll check on that. It's a small one though. So um, I'm gonna go try to catch a fish for dinner because that would be really nice. And uh, I told Heather I would catch one if we stayed. And so she believed me and I think it might have been a lie, but we'll see. So Ted's out right now trying to catch some fish for dinner, which would be pretty awesome because um, as you mentioned earlier, we're kind of out of food. We've got like bits and pieces. We've got like a couple corn on the cobs, which is great. We've got a couple peanut butter pitas. You know, we've got some fish crisps, so it'd be nice to get some fish, but not much. You know, we decided to stay another day, which was not uh, planned. 
but since we got some with all the storms and everything, it's finally broke, it's getting nice, it's supposed to be like 27 degrees tomorrow. So we really want to take advantage of that, just go swimming, you know, just have a great time and, you know, in the lake. So hopefully, uh, you know, he does catch some fish so we can, uh, you know, get some energy in us. It's not like we're starving or anything, but it would just be nice to have that meal, a nice hot uh, pan fried meal. So fingers crossed. Yes, I got dinner. Hi, Belly. I uh, went a little further, I got some old oak. So that burns long and hot, much better wood. Not, not a lot of dead oak around, but this is nice and dry, all the bark's falling off. And then these white pine boughs that are all dead along the bottom, they're excellent. Just the little branches are bone dry, great tinder, they just snap off. Uh, so I think we're good. I left a piece of the, bigger piece of the oak back there for someone else next time if they're crafty enough to find it. Good. Mm, so good. Here, you want a, one of these? It might be a bit crispier. Let me try mm, some of that okay. one. Mm. Really good. No bones at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Delicious, eh? Wow. So good. That was good.
Oh, well, the steak's pretty good. I cooked it well done because I'm paranoid. I've been sitting outside for whatever. It's bacon wrapped and all that stuff. How they're still afraid of it, but it's pretty darn good. Yummy. Mm, 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 mm. Apparently, I have to save one. Heather's reminding me for the dog. Because she's out of dog food and we'll have nothing to feed her tomorrow. But I feel like she can get her own food, yo. I guess I'll save her one. Not very big. Red meat isn't so dangerous to eat. Um, chicken and pork are a little different. And that's part of what made me nervous because this was wrapped in bacon. I just like to ask myself, what would the pirates have done? You know, what would the Indians have done? They would have eaten this for sure. Amazing, you know, I mean, we're getting all butter soft these days. Like, oh, no, it's horribly rotten, yuck, whatever, right? Good night, guys. And that's all she wrote. We ended up uh, scraping together enough food, so we ended up eating pretty well in the end. We scraped together a bunch of different things and uh, and ate well. Tomorrow, Bella doesn't have any breakfast, so she's getting um, a, some of that leftover steak. But we ended up eating enough, so it was good. And uh, tomorrow's supposed to be really nice, so looking forward to that. And uh, I'm just enjoying this nice evening after this kind of stretch of really unseasonably horrible cold and thunderstorm after thunderstorm weather. <laughs> Should be a good day. Good night, Heather. Good night. Good night, Ellie. Good night. Good girl. Good morning, Bella. Good morning, Bella. Oh, did you bring me a shoe? Did you bring me a shoe? Beans is one of Bella's many nicknames, so we call her Beans just as much as Bella, pretty much. Oh. Thanks to Beans. Beans! Beans, come here. Did you bring Mommy a shoe? Oh, thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> well, it's time for Bella's breakfast, and that consists of some steak um, and some half-eaten corn. So that's going to be interesting. What do you think, Belly? Do you want that? You do. You do want it? Look at what a good job she did. Pretty good. She chews it all off with her front teeth and I spin it for her, it's pretty smart. It's pretty smart, it's pretty smart. Um, better job than I do with corn. Pretty impressed. Your last piece of steak. There you go.
Jump! 